Cash Flow Diary Podcast, episode 239. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right. How are you guys doing today? Hopefully uh, going well and maybe the new year is treating you well and maybe you're knocking it out of the park already bigger, better, badder than you ever thought you could. I know some great things are happening over here and we're watching and witnessing a number of people changing and growing right before our eyes. And this is one of those times where you can take advantage of that energy. Give yourself the excuse to be someone different simply because, well, everyone else is doing it. It's kind of popular right now. So go out there, write some more offers. That's definitely something that I want to make sure that you're doing. You have measurable actions toward these goals of earning more money, getting involved in real estate, not just learning and listening. That's definitely part of it, but you also must take some action. So with that being said, one of the things uh, that I want to remind everybody doing is that If you want, you can go back and listen to some of the other episodes that we've been doing so far this year. Why? Because we're still going through the eight things to give up, right? Uh, You made some New Year's resolutions, and we have eight things that we've been talking about to give up. What are those eight things? Doubting yourself, negative thinking, fear of failure, criticizing others, negative self-talk, procrastination, fear of success, and people-pleasing. So today is going to be all about you giving up, criticizing others, criticizing others. So if you want to find out about doubting yourself, negative thinking, fear of failure, and giving those up, definitely want to check out the prior episodes to get the tools, tips, techniques to be able to make that happen. Because I'm guessing It's going to make you more productive if you let those things go, release them back to where they absolutely belong, i.e. away from you. So criticizing others. This is something (laughs) that uh, this one was pretty difficult for me uh, to necessarily talk about because I I don't believe that it's not uh, necessarily something I do a significant amount of of and early on in especially in my business career one of the things that i was asked and told and suggested it to me that i pick up was a book which totally influenced me in a very very strong way in terms of how i communicate to people and specifically uh just understanding the the goal of a conversation or relationship or outcome And by following these ideas and things inside the book, uh, I think it helps more to be, well, more productive at the end of the day. So I know you're probably wondering what's the name of the book. It's How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie book. um, Or did I? It's Carnegie. What did I say? (laughs) Anyway, you'll look it up. You'll know. You get the point. It's uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Here's the point. The major point of that book is in a lot of ways, no matter what you're saying, you're going to influence people and you can choose how you wish to influence them. You can influence them for good. You can make them, you know, people often say things like, you know, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? Those types of things. And that's something for us to be aware of as entrepreneurs, because one of the things that we're doing all the time is communicating our beliefs, thoughts, habits, ideas, and et cetera to many other people. And well, occasionally not somebody is going to believe what you believe and walk the same walk and talk the same talk as you. And you know what? That's perfectly okay. The question is, how on earth 
are you still going to be able to work with that person? Because in a lot of cases, sometimes we still have to figure that out, especially when that person is a customer, client, um, tenant, uh, etc. I mean, could you imagine if you had to require all of your tenants to believe what you believe and work, though, the, you know, agree with you and all these things that I mean, you probably have a lot of vacancies, right? And we don't want that. Uh, what about the team members? Same thing. You've got to figure out a way to work with those that are different than you. And I promise you that criticizing them is not the way to go. Not the way to go. So to put this particular episode together, it was a a challenge because I I had to do lots of actually reading and research and going, okay, why do we criticize others? What what is the point of that anyway? Um, Because it, you know, for me, it seems very useless. Uh, It doesn't move a lot of things forward. And so I, I don't I choose not to invest a lot of time doing it at the end of the day. And I, you know, I want to focus most of the time looking for solutions. I found a number of different articles and things online that I thought were interesting just in the comments of, you know, criticizing and, and why and its effects. Uh, one such comment was just how criticism serves to make you harsh, vindictive, and cruel, and leaves you with the soothing and flattering idea that you are somehow superior to others. That's an interesting standpoint, because I I know it's going to sound crazy, but I think real estate investors specifically are hyper- guilty of what I just said. So I'll say it again. Criticism serves to make you harsh, vindictive, cruel, and leaves you with the soothing and flattering idea that you are somehow superior to others. I'll tell you the primary example of place where this comes in. And then the secondary, there are two really, really big areas where this is, you know, an issue. And you should be, I think, aware of it, if nothing else. So uh, the the number one time I believe that this happens is, you know, you, you've you gone through the work to, to find someone who's willing to sell and maybe now you're walking their property. And again, it doesn't really matter what type of property you're walking the property. That's part of the process, right? You're going to go look at the process, uh, the property and, and make sure, you know, it's quote unquote up to snuff or whatever. But typically what happens is that you are looking for what's wrong with it. And, and that's fine. You can look for what's wrong with it. Indeed, you should. At this point, I have no problem with that. The challenge is, is what comes out of your mouth to the seller when they're present? Uh, because a- ask yourself this. When you are selling a property or when someone's selling a property in general, what emotional state do you think they're they are in? Uh, for example, do you think they're you know feeling strong and confident at that moment? Uh, is there a problem in their life going on? Is it a life event? I mean, how confident and strong do you feel when you're experiencing a life event or some sort of challenge? And the thing to really hone in on is that at that moment, they they may not feel uh, very confident or strong and, and, and possibly even so far as to say weak because they're having to sell this property. And, and, and if you're doing probate, this is probably even more true, right? Because there's so many things that are going on, not to mention the conflicting emotions, uh, et cetera, that are also happening at the same time. H- here's the point. Do you think being critical of grandma's house, do you think saying, oh, look at how, uh, you know, tearing the house apart with words, do you think that's endearing you to them to you know, help you even close this deal? Do you want to hang around? Think about it. How do you feel when someone comes at you with critical words about anything that you've done or that you care about or that you're emotionally close to? And for a lot of sellers, they could be emotionally close to the property, right? Now, notice I keep saying the word the property instead of like your house. That's one of those Subtle but important things. To me, it's the property. To them, it's their house. And you want to do your best to to not talk bad about the property because they might actually take that as a personal offense. And I don't think that's going to help you at the negotiating table. And it's definitely not going to help when you start asking for things like seller financing or low downs or um, when you're asking for <laughs> low escrow, if any escrow deposits, right? You're You're not setting yourself up in order to for them to feel 
Like, yeah, I want to, I want to allow this person to help me by attempting to put yourself in a superior position and or prove how much you think you know, they probably don't care at the end of the day. They, they probably just don't care. So some of the things to consider, I was actually looking up on psychologytoday.com, believe it or not, they had a list of 30 possible reasons why someone might choose to be critical. And I find it interesting. Obviously, I'm not going to read all 30, but if you want to go look it up, you can. It's the 30 most common reasons people might criticize you. And then it says, and 14 questions to ask yourself before you strike back. Um, that, that That is the name of the article. But I found some of them to be interesting, especially when we talk about this whole situation and potential relationship that you're trying to build with the seller is... You know, some of some of the reasons you might be if you find yourself in this desire to be critical and more importantly, criticizing others or anything for that matter, it can occasionally be seen as that you're threatened, uh, that they're threatened by your competence, attractiveness. So they're trying to level the playing field. Well, are you are you the as a, the real estate investor feeling insecure and you're trying to, quote unquote, level the playing field in some way? I thought that was interesting uh sometimes people are critical of you because they have a concern about your motivation skill level performance and or contribution i think that's kind of clear uh or they feel like you're not doing your share of the work of being a team player see uh, there's certain things that you you just need to be aware of especially if you you're running a team and you've got this going on or they feel insecure and are overcompensating or they think you're making them look bad in front of others this is definitely true if you have happened you know how some sellers tend to like to have a representative they're like hey my cousin they know about real estate uh i want them there and then now you're tearing down the house and you're just setting up this adversary relationship that does not go well and then they never call you back and anyway all of these things are, 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 are part of the reasons why you might want to reconsider how you actually speak to the seller. Because I don't think it's helping you in the negotiation stance. And at the end of the day, it, what's important? Is it important that you feel superior? Is it important that you feel right and or heard? Or is it important that you help them solve the problem? If it's important that you help them solve the problem, then please focus on helping them solve the problem. That doesn't mean there isn't a time, and there is, uh, to to bring up the deficiencies in the structure. Absolutely, there's a time for that. But you've got to learn how to say it so it doesn't put you in an adversarial position and thus limits your options as you continue your negotiations. I'm telling you, How to Win Friends and Influence People, it's an important book. If you haven't read it, go pick it up for sure. Because, well, it'll help you avoid or at least lessen the occurrence of these challenging situations. Because, see, when someone is receiving criticism, that it, it puts them in a defensive position and causes them to justify it. It, it, it. This is the proverbial digging in of the heels. You're like, but the property's not worth that. D- uh, yes, it is. And here's why. <laughs> And then you go back and forth and you're arguing over price and you're really what really happened is that you both your egos got flared and, and you know, tripped. And now uh, to protect one another, neither of you can give in and you're all frustrated. They're so unreasonable. I can't believe it. Don't they understand how I, I've, I did all the comps. I did all the, the I did. Yeah, you did. That that may be very well true. And the, the only challenge is, is how you're communicating what you're communicating. It's not like they're saying, you know, what you're saying isn't true. But sales, and I learned this a long time ago, a sales is not the place where you get your needs met, period. So don't try to position yourself as someone who needs to get their needs met, i.e. feel superior, be in control. Those types of things do not get the deal done. So, you know, criticizing in those ways won't help you. At all, because likely what could happen in this particular case is that they start to feel frustrated because you not listening. And so they're just going to be critical of you now. You don't have escrow. You don't have this. You don't have that. Who are I mean, you know, uh, they get critical of your paperwork. All of these things start to happen. And there are lots of objections and challenges that you probably brought up yourself. 
and made happen, which then only cause it to be more of a problem. Remember, many times the seller you're working with, especially if you're working seller direct, as you should, especially you wholesalers, as you're working seller direct, you're in this situation and they're hoping that you can help them. They may not actually have an answer. You're supposed to be the knight in shining armor. You're supposed to be the one who's rescuing them. And here you are making them feel worse about what they already feel bad about. Most likely. Most of the time when dealing with sellers, this is the case. They already feel this way. And then you are not helping because, and for whatever reason, you may actually believe that doing that gets you a better deal. I believe it just ruins the relationship. It's your choice, but I'm just telling you, criticism is absolutely futile. There's no reason to do it, as far as I'm concerned. So, what what could you do instead? What about just stepping back and trying to see things from their perspective? Figure out why do they want the things that they want? Why are they saying it's way more productive to understand, especially if you're stuck on price? Well, how did you come to that number? Now, I'm not criticizing their number, although it can come off the wrong way, depending on <laughs> tone of voice. I want to know. Oh, that's interesting. How did you come up with that number? Because there's a reason they want that number. Ask them. You, you could ask yourself if you were in similar circumstances and had the exact same temperament as them, if everything that was going on in their life, first of all, do you even know? Most of the time the answer is no, Jay. Why would I bother asking that? I'm just trying to get my deal done. Yeah, it's because you're focused on you. So, you know, stop that. But ask yourself, if you were under similar circumstances as they and endowed with the same temperament as they, can't, isn't it possible? Isn't it just possible that you might be reacting the same way? Can you at least go that far to, you know, walk a mile in their moccasins, so to speak? And if that doesn't work, just ask yourself, when was the last time I was perfect? <laughs> you know, um, have you always gotten it right? How would you feel just dry a little bit to show a little bit more compassion, caring, listening? These types of things, these skill sets will get you much further than proving how much you think you actually know, because that that's really what it comes down to. And, and do you realize that uh, another thing you could do is that not is just to understand that not everything you're thinking actually needs to be said. <laughs> Exercising a little self control never hurt anybody, because if you were under the same circumstances, people here's here's a way of looking at it. Uh, sometimes people go, I would never, I mean, I want to buy subject to, I want to buy subject to the existing mortgage, but I would never sell that way. Well, I disagree strongly because if you were in that position, if life situation was what it was, and that was the only way you could get rid of it, rid of your pain, you would do it because you would choose to alleviate the pain. When the pain's big enough, often we, we, you know, we decide with different centers of our brain, different pieces of our brain, we make decisions that we might not have otherwise made. The point is you're looking for relief and someone comes to you with something that is subject to, even though you understand that you're still gonna be responsible for the debt and they're gonna be on title and all these other things, you, you, you would do it if the pain was bad enough. And your seller? The very person whose house, yeah, you know what? They probably should have painted. Yeah, they probably should have covered up the wall or the holes. Yeah, they probably should have, you know, fixed the cabinets. Yeah, they probably, I mean, and it's not like they don't know, <laughs> you know, they're very well aware. They could be very well in the back of their head going, God, I please hope they make an offer. In fact, they, they probably are. Uh, I hope they make an offer. I hope they don't see all the things that are wrong and they can make an offer because I need this property sold is often a common thing going through their mind. But are you brave enough to ask and find that out and actually come alongside them and help them solve their problem? I mean, why are you expecting them to be perfect? I don't know. Criticizing other people doesn't help because no one's perfect. Not even you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Arguing with me in your head right now. Yes, you. That little voice is saying, you don't know me. You're right. I, I don't know your name, but I know this. No human. It's perfect. Not even you. So give them a break too. 
whomever you are talking to, not just your seller, maybe it's your spouse, whatever it is, criticizing others isn't going to get you to the goal. You're trying to have a great relationship with somebody. I promise you, criticizing them is likely the worst thing you could do. See, um, one of the things you could do instead is to try to take responsibility for it. And a way you can do this in negotiations, which I think is awesome because it often gets you exactly what you're looking for, is, you know, let's say there's some deferred maintenance or maybe there's, you know, something that the seller should have fixed, an electrical problem. It doesn't really matter what it is. There's something that's like, uh uh-oh, I see a big problem here. And you're you're thinking, man, that's going to cost me a lot of money to fix. And, you know, they already want too much money for this house. All right, so let's get a little bit more creative. So here's a very, very simple strategy. Very simple, hyper simple. Anybody can do it. You can do it. And it will get you a better deal. So, uh, and frequently this is, you know, like my common go-to. When you see something like that, it's like, cool. And we're asked them again, you know, things like, hi, how, what was the price? Or what were you looking to get? Okay, and how did you get to that number? Okay, um, so here's what I'm thinking. I think... We can get you to that number, but here's my challenge. In order to give you that number, because of X, Y, Z, this is where you state the problem, because of the broken staircase, because of the bad electrical, because of the roof, because of the condition of the kitchens, because you still have shag carpet, um, here's how we can do that. Here's option one, option two, option three. And then you give them option one, two, and three. So did you hear how... I did that. I didn't actually say, oh, man, look at that rug. That sucks. I can't. I'm not going to be able to pay you what you want. I I didn't do that. They know the rug is bad. That's not a secret. They just (laughs) they just took you by it. (laughs) Right. Um, So, you know, that's not a secret. Being critical of it isn't going to help you. But yes, it's something, it's a challenge that needs to be addressed. Okay, cool. So find out what it is, remind them of uh, what it is that they're asking for, figure out a way to get to there and let them know, okay, cool. Here's how we can do that together. Option one, option two, and option three. And what it comes down to is that when you do that, you end up in a better position. They don't hate you. And you actually come off as a person who might've been trying to help them. Like I said, I think there there are many opportunities for real estate investors to specifically be guilty of this critical nature thing and being critical of others. Now, the I said there were two. The other is inside of the lending slash commercial space uh, because it's it's just like you you can feel at times that there are times like you have to pass this bar with this lender or with commercial. Uh, realtors, inspectors, and all these other things, and just understand they're humans too. There's no sense when you're on the receiving end of that criticism, hey, you don't know what went on on their day. I'm just also asking you not to be on the giving end as well Uh, because it it totally comes uh, in and from, you know, you're not qualified and I'm this and I've got, you know, 12 letters uh, and all these designations. And again, I'm not saying those designations aren't important. I'm just saying for for you and I to to recognize that the person, yeah, they have worked hard and they're they want to make sure that there's recognition of that work. But that that doesn't necessarily mean you have to get defensive either. So it's there, but all of us are human We can be shiny, happy people. (laughs) We can figure this thing out if we just take it one step at a time. Just understand that we're influencing people. So I said it before. I'll say it again. Go get the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Read it cover to cover. Do (laughs) Just implement it. Make it a part of you in every way, shape, or form. And just understand criticism is super, super futile. By the way, one of the best critics of you as well you. But this is not the episode we're going to be talking about negative self-talk. So there'll be more on that next time. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time. 